At Barber this weekend, we saw some pretty extreme weather. A, a storm cell came through and we got about an inch and a half of water in the course of uh, like 20 minutes. That's a lot of water and it's hard for that water to be evacuated. So what ended up happening on track is we had standing water through the kink. So this is on the back straight past museum turn. Uh, there's a, a left then a right hand turn. And my first approach to it, it was really slippery more than I expected. And I saw sudden just understeer. Like as soon as those front tires got into that standing water, I had almost no control. So I'm going to show you a quick clip of, uh, of that and what you're seeing here is I set my turn in and as soon as I've started now you can see my steering movement and it's not doing much of anything. I have almost no influence over the direction of the car when I'm in that standing water. On exit, this is what gets interesting, on exit of that turn, you, whatever steering input you have suddenly works, right? That steering input suddenly plates to yaw. Um, and so you'll see on the exit, when I exit that turn, all of a sudden that, that steering input is going to be suddenly applicable. And that's why you see that correction at the end, all right? So setting up before and then that correction required at the end. All right, so what do we take from this? If you encounter this sort of situation, and it's probably even more likely to happen on the road where you get onto the, to a patch of something, what's critical is you need to set up so that you're pointed the right direction before you hit this slick condition, whether that's black ice, whether it's hydroplaning, something like that, um, and you're gonna have that understeer. Now, you'll see I'm actually rowing the wheel a little bit. I'm feeling that out, but if you do that, you have to be super aware that whenever you catch traction, it's gonna to try to rip the car out from underneath you, right? So the best thing you can do is keep those wheels straight. You've got your wheels dead straight. When grip returns, the car is gonna continue straight. You can get it back under control. So you can see it needed quite a bit of correction at the exit here, um, and that's not ideal. So um, to try to straighten the wheel, come straight out there. Once you're on grip surface again, you'll have the opportunity to get, regain control of the car, reposition it on track um, or, or on the road. So hopefully you've got enough space on either side that's dry, that you can do something with it. In this case, there's just enough room, not much extra. Um, thankfully, there's some runoff on the far end, so if things got a little hairy, you'd be able to go straight. And again, uh, to reiterate the point that straight wheels keeps the car more under control, even if I had to drive straight off the track, I could continue straight, I'd get back into the grip surface, and uh, and then you'd be able to safely uh, recover. So sometimes you'll get into this situation not expecting it, keep those wheels straight. When traction returns, now you'll have options again. So look what's going on ahead. You have to make a judgment call. In this case, there's nothing dangerous about it. Um, if I was not turned left enough, I'd go into the grass, not ideal. If I was turned, um, if I turned there, but I didn't have an opportunity to regain traction and stay on course, I could go straight off onto the gr grip surface over there and just come to a controlled stop. So at the speeds I was going, there was, there was no situation that was irrecoverable. Um, and thankfully there was a line where I was able to uh, correct and continue on course. Later in the session, I managed to be able to get that wheel straight and have less of a dramatic exit um, from that section and then that allowed me to continue on. But until that water fully clears, you're not gonna have much control through there. I, I, I do wanna tack onto this, uh, you know, keeping up, especially with a street car, keeping up with enough tread on your tires that it can do as designed and, uh, and, and give you that, that control in the wet surfaces or in icy conditions in some cases is critical. That's why you use um, stud tires, uh, you know, in icy conditions, that's why you use, uh, you know, those proper tires, and that's why you have that kind of, you got to keep up with those tires, otherwise you're not going to have as much grip as what's possible. In this case, um, use this clearly as just demonstration. If you encounter a situation uh, unexpected, the, the physics all apply, even with studded tires. You know, if you've got, if you've got a very different um, kind of surface, there's still going to be slip involved. You're still going to want to uh, feel out where that control is and be ready. If you've got the wheels turned and traction conditions, 
traction conditions improve, it's going to suddenly apply, and you're going to get you're going to have to make that correction. So uh, one more piece of clarification: this is mostly true for a rear-wheel drive car. In front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, um, the dynamics change a little bit because you can kind of pull yourself out of the situation by driving those front wheels. But in rear-wheel drive, it, it is very pendulum, right? Uh, but in no case do you want to suddenly lift off the throttle. Now you'll notice on my exit here, I'm staying on the gas. I even have to let go of the wheel so that I'm not getting in the way of the caster in the alignment that's trying to quickly rotate the car for to make a correction, right? And, and you might, in some cases, maybe even in this case, you might be able to do that by, by staying hands on the wheel. But I, in this case, I let go of the wheel, regained control, and brought it back in, but I stayed on the power. Now, I didn't stay on the power to make it a cool, awesome overslide, oversteer. Um, I, I stayed on the power to maintain traction on the rear. I wanted to send grip back there so that I could keep things smooth. If I suddenly let the, the grip shift forward, which is what would happen if, uh, if I let off the gas, it, it would be exacerbating the problem, right? The problem is we're suddenly gaining grip in the front where I wasn't steering before, now I'm steering, okay? So if I lift off the gas, I'm gonna make that problem happen even more. If I stay on the gas, then I at least don't make that any more extreme and I can smooth out that correction. In drifting, you find when you try, want your transitions from a drift in one direction to the other direction, you actually wanna stay on power to slow that transition, that rotation. Right, you want to stay on power to slow it. If you lift off, you can speed it up. It's actually use that to your advantage in, in drifting, right? That, that's something that they do intentionally. Um, but on the road course, the physics are still the same, right? So just try to smooth it and slow that down by maintaining traction on those rear wheels as much as you can by staying steady on the throttle, maybe even a little bit of acceleration. But you're already going to spin those wheels, so not too crazy. But that's how the physics work. Thanks. With any luck, I could dig up some other footage and find other things to talk about like this. So if you found this helpful, let me know. I'll try to make more videos like this and talk about driving dynamics and use some of my experiences to, to help you out and help you improve as a driver. Uh, thanks for watching.